In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So Genesis 1 tells us that God created everything, that God made his own building blocks. We call them elements. He took those building blocks and he knit things together. Things like trees or plants, birds, you and I. He created order out of chaos. Now that's real important, the order part. It's that order that allows us to identify patterns of predictability in our universe and how everything works around us. We call that science. Now, there are many different types of sciences, of course. You've got biology, for example, the study of life. You've got physics that sort of tells us how the universe behaves, really. And then there's chemistry. Now, chemistry is a study of those elements, that, that matter that we talked about, and how it interacts, how it changes. Chemistry is in everything that you do. Your body is made of chemicals. Chemical reactions occur when you're eating, when you're breathing, even when you're sleeping. So since everything is made of chemicals, it's very important for us to understand how those chemicals work. So that's going to be our journey for this year, to understand better chemistry. To put it simply, chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. So that begs the question, what's matter? I don't know. What's the matter with you? <laughs> that's a good one. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, uh, hey, man. What's up? We talked about this, right? We said not while I'm teaching, not while I'm presenting new content, right? That, that's, that's the deal. What? 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 Uh, oh, yeah, dude, you're totally out of French onion dip. I, I, dude, I just, I just bought this yesterday. What? That's not cool, all right? That's not cool. We're going to talk about this later. Nailed it. That's Slim. You have to excuse him. He's excited. Anyway, matter is best described as anything that has mass and takes up space. The walls around us, the desk that you're sitting in front of, the chair you're sitting in, the ceiling. Even, even the air we breathe has little tiny bits of matter. And it all has mass and it all takes up space. Here's another one you've probably heard of before. A substance, otherwise known as a chemical, is matter that has a definite, uniform composition. Dude, no one told me I had to wear a uniform. Not that type of uniform. Hmm. Yeah, it's not my contract. Let's move on. So let's talk a little bit about characteristics of matter. So here's two terms that we need to get to know, mass and weight. Now, are mass and weight the same thing? Not really. Mass is best described as a measurement of the amount of matter. The textbook having a particular amount of matter. The desk having a particular amount of matter. Weight, on the other hand, is that measurement of the amount of matter, but also takes into account the effect of Earth's gravitational pull on that matter. Did you know that gravity is working all around us? Gravity works on me and the whiteboard. Whiteboard and me. Uh, it works on me and the camera. The camera is being pulled to me. Slim is being pulled to me, and I'm being pulled towards Slim. Slim, stop. At any rate, weight is that effect that gravity has on matter. Gravitational pull and mass go hand in hand. And that's why the camera doesn't come flying toward me, and I don't go to flying toward the camera, because the Earth being so much more massive, well, that means its gravitational pull is so much greater as well. And it completely overshadows the individual little gravitational pulls that we have on each other. The great thing about mass is it's constant. We're always talking about that measurement of the amount of matter. We're not taking into account the Earth's gravitational pull. Why is that important? Well, what if we're in different areas that have different gravitational pulls? Close to sea level, the gravitational pull is going to be a little stronger than if I'm, say, on a very, very high mountain. Or 
in space for that matter, right? But my mass will stay consistent regardless of where I am. So because of those differences in weight, depending on where you are, scientists use mass instead when they're making their calculations. That way it's consistent regardless of where you are on the earth. Now in chemistry and in science in general, we make a lot of observations. We watch, we look at something that's going on. Now we see things macroscopically, but in the chemical world, a lot of things that happen are things that happen on the sub-microscopic level. So that's why it's going to be important for us to understand how these chemicals work together. If we can understand things on a sub-microscopic level, we can understand better why they happen on the macroscopic level. Sometimes we'll see things in experiments that we just can't understand with ordinary macroscopic vision, with macroscopic thinking. Therefore, we have to develop what are called models. Models can be visual or verbal or even mathematical expressions of understanding data that comes from experiments. Now, we use several different types of models in chemistry. We'll get to those in subsequent chapters. Chemistry has been called the central science because so much of what happens in other sciences depends on chemistry, at least a working knowledge of chemistry. But there's so much to find in the world of chemistry that we break it up into different sections, different groupings. For example, we have organic, which is basically chemistry of carbon-based materials. Inorganic would thus be non-carbon-based materials. Organic would be things like pharmaceuticals, drugs, plastics. Inorganic would be things like minerals, metals, nonmetals, semiconductors. Physical chemistry has to do with the behavior and energy of changes of matter. We learn about things like reaction rates or mechanisms, the way that these things come together. Analytical chemistry would be components and composition, things like quality control or knowing really the nuts and bolts of a particular compound. Biochemistry has to do with the matter and processes of living organisms. So we would study things like metabolism, fermentation, other natural processes like that. Polymer chemistry is actually a branch of organic chemistry and in polymer chemistry you study polymers and plastics, textiles, coatings, all different types of plastics. Environmental chemistry is exactly that. You study matter in the environment. So you'd study things like pollution, its effects on the environment. Industrial chemistry, the chemistry you'd find in say a plant or a factory for instance, making things like paints or more coatings. Theoretical chemistry deals with the interactions of chemicals and really we're talking about across the board here. All these different areas require some theoretical chemistry. And finally, thermochemistry would have to do with the heat and energy involved in these chemical processes. So these are the major areas we see in the world of chemistry. There are others that are sort of offshoots of each one, but these kind of encompass the overall general fields of chemistry. That's all the time we have for today. That's all we're doing. Just wanted to give you an introduction to the world of chemistry. It's my hope that as we learn together, as we go through this process, that you'll have a better understanding of those things that we can't see. But in doing so, that we will get a better understanding of the order that God placed in His creation. And when we do that, we'll be able to better recognize the fingerprints of God all around us. So until next time, God bless.